basic. This shouldn't be controversial. The Department of Transportation should be led by somebody who actually has expertise, some knowledge at least of transportation rather than somebody who is, I don't know, a failed mayor who knows more about paternity leave policies than knows about, than knows about the actual thing that they're supposedly regulating. What's going on, Mother Truckers? Oh, welcome to Mother Trucker News. Email us on MotherTruckerNews at gmail.com. Uh, today, live just hours ago, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy uh, was uh, making his trucking policy live at the Iowa 80 truck stop. You know, he states at the end of his live that uh, no candidate is talking about truck drivers. You know, my question of the day for all the truck drivers out there is, do you think Vivek is a good candidate for president of the United States? Some people say that he'd make a great VP to Trump. My truckers, comment down below. What are your thoughts about this? You know, um... It's one of those things where we do need a change. We need a change for trucking, and we need someone that cares about trucking policies. Is this someone that you truly believe cares about trucking policies or not? Definitely comment down. I'll show snippets of what he's talking about. Uh, we might get an opportunity to interview him in the near future. If we do, you know, what comments and questions would you like me to ask him? Because uh, definitely, uh, if he has uh, opportunity to change the lives of truck drivers, we definitely need to get into his ear. So, my truckers, comment down below. What are your thoughts? Uh, this is the question of the day. And, you know, I will put up links when they show up to his full uh, live so that you can see his trucking policies and tell me what you think. But the biggest thing is, do you think that he is the right person to help make a change for truck drivers? Yes or no? Do you like them? Do you not? You know, I definitely want to hear from you guys. So I appreciate you guys. Amazing group of truckers in there, Vivek. That was a pretty amazing group of truckers. And very, and I like that they were very vocal and super knowledgeable. I mean, I think it was kind of humbling, actually. Like, you, there's some things I know a lot about. This is not one of the areas where I know a ton about. I thought we had a great conversation, and, and I gave them my principles, but I learned as much as I contributed out of this event. And, you know, I think it's kind of sad that, I'm the only candidate who's actually touched this issue. You would think that this has been a major topic that others would have covered, especially post-COVID, the supply chain shortages and all of that. But, you know, you don't wait for others to do it. You get to what's important yourself. And I know it's not a popular issue in this campaign cycle and whatever. It's not going to be a wedge issue in this campaign. But I think it would be an important policy area of an easy win we could score pretty early in my administration to stand up for truckers with what sounded like are some pretty basic policy shifts that could address a lot of our shortages. So that's my sense of it. Let me tell you something. Truckers in this country, they're the backbone of our country. It's not just about moving things from place to place. That's our entire supply chain. That's how our economy runs. That's how we're able to live our modern way of life. You want to talk about supply chain shortages? Part of that is because of making life much more difficult for truckers to be able to do their jobs. It's also people who have been on the front lines of standing for liberty that rolls back the regulatory overreach that's holding back the trucking industry and the jobs of truckers, our trucker policy, many Americans who have been forgotten, people who drive trucks, keep this economy on track, help us live the lives that we do to show our gratitude, to say thank you, and also not just to say it with our words, but say it with action, exactly what we're going to do to fix regulatory overreach, and yes, to stand for freedom. Well, I mean, I've been interested in this for a few years since the Canadian trucker issue, and so picked up bits and pieces, but there's a lot more still to learn. What's that? Don't worry about the Canadians. Don't worry about the Canadians. They can stay up in Canada. Worry about the truckers. In the exactly. Market. Yeah, no, absolutely. Same thing with Mexico. They can come up to 150 miles, but we can't go to Mexico. Why not? We're not allowed to go to Mexico. That's Mexican rule. It's a Mexican rule. Interesting. That's, that's the government rule. We can't go to Mexico. Our trailers are gone, but our trailers don't come back. They, hij they hijacked them. Interesting. And that's a fact, because I had two chairs hijacked off me. Two what? Two chairs got hijacked. Who took them? They went into Mexico. They come back over. See, that's the other thing, is I think the theft is, is a big issue. I mean, people aren't, for all the regulations that we have, look at the theft that you see on a regular basis. And so, for, for me, America first is, Mexico shouldn't apply restrictions to us that somehow we're not applying to people on the other side of that border. My obligation as your next president is to the citizens of this country. 
not any other one. That's what it means to put this country first. I learned something right there. And that's shameful. But that, that's got that's simple things that have got to end to say, actually, we're going to prioritize our own. If Mexico is applying those restrictions, why wouldn't we in the other direction? So what's your name, man? Good. Do you drive? Yeah. Take somebody who's behind the wheel. You get a really different perspective than the people who have been sitting behind a desk. So I appreciate that. I would like to know about the safety of the Mexican drivers coming over here. What's their record compared to and their requirements compared to the U.S.? Yeah, what would you say, Lee, in terms of the Mexican drivers driving cross-border in this direction? Versus, I'm going off the cuff because I don't pay attention to it, but a lot of that has to do with when NAFTA was through and there was government. Um, we got screwed in that. Yep. That were put in place for so many to come over here. Their companies had to have a certain safety rating before they were allowed to come over. And they're only supposed to go so many miles, but because of NAFTA and then USMCA, a lot of that stuff got changed. And the way some of the regulations are in this book, drivers don't aren't accounted for if you're in a free trade zone, which is a little secret. You don't have to follow a lot of regulations if you're in that. So when they just keep crossing the border, they just keep going and people lose track of them. Yeah. Well, Lee, I'm, I'm, I'm all ears for the other questions you wanted to cover as well, and thanks to the group who submitted them. The illegal immigrants and, and language, actually, and I can do this on the call. There was an accident in Colorado a few years ago. A lot of drivers remember it. Guy went down the hill, killed a bunch of people because he couldn't read the sign that said stop. You know, yep. We'll pull off here for a runaway ramp. One of the requirements in this book is says if you're going to drive truck, have a CDL, must be able to read, write, and speak English. Yep. FMCSA has told CBSA, which is another book down here, of enforcement on our division not to put that as not a service. <coughs> There's states in this country that offer the CDL test in 49 different languages. doesn't make any sense. So I just think this relates to a more fundamental view of my policies as U.S. president. We've lost our sense of national cohesion. Right? My, my parents, they're immigrants to this country. I'm the kid of legal immigrants to this country. We used to talk when I grew up in the 1990s in Ohio about this idea of the melting pot. You don't hear about that in the United States anymore. It's considered probably a microaggression if you're to mention it. Well, I think that this country was founded on certain basic attributes we should share in common. That's what makes our diversity and our differences beautiful. And so this has been a little bit controversially when I've offered this in the past. But I think every ballot in the United States, when you're voting, the sole language on that ballot should be English. I don't think that's too much to ask. I think that English should be the national language of the United States of America. That gives people a standard to say there's a common language that binds us together. We're not founded on a monarch. We're not founded on a single religion. We're not founded on one particular ethnic heritage. And I think that's a good thing. That's America. We're founded on a set of ideals that unites us together. But if you're a nation founded on ideals, you have to be able to communicate those ideals with each other. If you don't have a common language, you can't do that. But even worse, now people are you know, literally dying as a consequence as well. You have one system that at least binds us together across those differences. Without that, we're just a bunch of different looking higher mammals with a bunch of different shades of melon and two legs walking some geographic space we call a country. And sadly, occasionally getting hit, hit by trucks that go off the wayside in Colorado. And I think that that's wrong. And I think what happened there was sad and I'm in no way going to make light of that at all, but to say that at least let it be a learning and a crude reminder that we have to have certain things that unite us as Americans. And I do think that a single language rule and the requirement to know that language, whether you're coming from Mexico or anywhere else, is a requirement to be able to not only drive a truck, but do a lot of other things, including voting at the ballot box in this country. So that's where I land on that, Lee crushing that out of existence. And so one thing basic, this shouldn't be controversial. The Department of Transportation should be led by somebody who actually has expertise, some knowledge at least of transportation rather than somebody who is, I don't know, a failed mayor who knows more about paternity leave policies than knows about, than knows about the actual thing that they're supposedly regulating. And the same goes for the FMCA, some city sewage person who has never sat behind the wheel trying to actually regulate the people who actually do. That's a basic place where we've got to start. 
I'm getting a head start on thinking about should I be successful in this as we hope to be. What does that actually look like? That's where presidents have failed. I respect a lot of what President Trump did for this country, but one of the learnings from that is he wasn't ready with the kinds of people who you needed to put in the positions. You say you want to drain the swamp, but it ends up being more of a wish than a reality unless you have the SWAT team really ready for it. And so you know, I'll always respect the people who came before me, Trump included, but we want to build on that and take this actually to the next level. Don't make this just, for me, this isn't lip service today. This is the beginning of the kinds of people who are going to put into those positions that actually take advantage of the valuable assets of the, I would say, highly intelligent and motivated people who are in this industry for a reason. Don't turn them into machines. I think we're actually going to be worse off if we do that versus harnessing the power of actual discretion, judgment, and the innovation that comes from that. That's, I think, how we're going to once again unlock the power of this industry, the power of truckers and also actually retain the people who are gonna to need to retain in this industry if our economy is gonna to continue to function. So I know, it, my, our, uh, Zach, do we, have, uh, do we have time for one more? We, okay, time to our next event. Well, Lee, I just wanted to 